find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show episode 88. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters from the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, where we talk independent professional wrestling with our usual guest of the week. Get that in a moment. Uh, myself, a production guy here locally with some uh, promotions, some documentaries, and uh, stuff that doesn't have to do with professional wrestling. I get to film drones this week. Uh, so a lot of fun stuff. Uh, sorry, I'm just excited to have to share that everywhere. Uh, also with me from San Antonio, Texas, he is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. He is Eamon Payton. Eamon, too, please, on the Twitters. Thank you, sir. Glad to be back. Glad to be talking about indie wrestling again uh, for 88 episodes. This is kind of crazy. It's, we're, we're getting up there. We're almost at the 100. It's kind of weird. That's right, that's right. And of course, you can check out this and a whole bunch of other shows at the newly redesigned uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Please uh, subscribe to this and the other shows in audio and video formats on YouTube, iTunes, and the like. Even iHeartRadio, next to your uh, radio station you might be listening to. And drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0 or that email address of goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And uh, please check out our friends, basicsickness.com. Of course, uh, uh, the music that you hear before this and the Wrestling Mayhem Show free music there. Um, another independent wrestling, I'm sorry, independent music for the independent wrestling show uh, in independent podcasting. Sure, that works. Uh, so, Eamon, who do we have with us this week? Well, uh, sorry, it was my week this week to bring in a guest here on the show, and I'm very excited to have this guest on. Uh, someone who uh, is making his way up in, in the Texas independent wrestling scene. He's uh, definitely becoming one of the more recognizable uh, up-and-coming faces on this scene. Uh, so it's definitely very exciting to have him on the show. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show, Unholy Gregory James. Greg, how are you this evening? I'm good. I'm good. Eamon, you have the coolest uh, Twitter handle. Eamon to please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, Thank you for the but warm Yeah, work. definitely. Uh, uh, very happy to have you on. No problem. Uh, I guess the uh, best way to kind of start this off, kind of an icebreaker question of sorts. Uh, uh, obviously, everyone we, we have on the show gets into wrestling one way or the other. Uh, so uh, what is uh, your first ever memory of watching professional wrestling? Oh, my gosh. I think – I can't remember the exact first thing, but I think – my first live experience was going to the sportatorium when I was a kid with my grandmother and my mom. My dad actually didn't like wrestling. He thought it was hokey and carny, if you will. And uh, my mom and my grandmother took me, and I remember walking through the curtain and heading to the uh, to the seats, and Jeff Jarrett's in the middle of the ring cutting a promo. And uh, that was what set it off for me. That's uh, that's probably my first wrestling memory, and I remember going to the Sportatorium a lot as a kid, uh, seeing the Renegade and and uh, One Two Three Kid bef- before he was signed and all that stuff. So it was a uh, it was in my youth at a very young age. Awesome. Um, so your transition then from sort of uh, watching wrestling and and getting started to pro wrestling. Uh, when was it that you kind of decided that you wanted to sort of do this uh, uh, professionally? Uh, it's kind of always been in the back of my mind as a kid. I always wanted to be a wrestler. I always played with the toys and play the video games and make a character and all that stuff. Just always idolized the wrestlers and wanted to be one. And uh, when I was uh, when I was in high school, I kind of took a, a different path. I went down the the music world, and I was a bass player, a singer. I was in a band, recorded a CD. I did all that before really finding that I really just wanted to get in a wrestling ring. And that was about, I think 2008 was when I first got into a wrestling ring. I think I was like 21, 21. Yeah. 21. And then I, uh, I took to it immediately. Just fell in love with it. Awesome. And, and I know I kind of wanted to get into it too, because I'm, I'm not sure if this was around the time you got your start out. Uh, Cause I know one of the promotions that you're very prominent in and, and sort of the face of in many ways is uh, Metroplex Wrestling out in Dallas. Uh, yeah. So was it in, in, around that Dallas area that you kind of got kind of got your start? 
uh, it was actually with MPX that I got my start. Um, Kirby and the guys that uh, started MPX, uh, I kind of walked in the door uh, before they even had a show going and just started training with them. And months down the line, more and more people came along and started helping us train. And eventually, uh, we started doing more and more shows. Uh, Carrie and Arcane and Frankie Fisher and Hayden and Christopher Hayden were like three of the main guys that came in and really uh, started uh, taking me under their wing as far as wanting to uh, to, to train and and as well as as well as the other guys that were uh, working with MPX and then uh, I remember uh, Matt Palmer came into MPX and I had seen Matt wrestle uh, once before at a, at a a local promotion in like Fort Worth and it was uh VCCW and he ended up uh, getting thrown out of the ring by Robert Evans and landed in my lap and um then months later or like a year later I don't even remember but uh just a little bit down the line here I am training with Matt and he he really took me under his wing and really uh helped me hone my craft as craft as far as uh, uh chain wrestling and and storytelling and the technicality of actually being in a wrestling match. Definitely. Uh, going also uh, even beyond sort of those fun, the, those sort of fundamental aspects. I know one of the big things about you, especially that people sort of gravitate towards, is your character. And I know over the last couple of years, you went through a bit of a transformation. Uh, I, when I first saw you wrestle, you were uh, too much metal, Gregory James. Obviously, you know, yeah. <laughs> taking from some of that music side. Um, and, yeah. and now you've kind of become unholy games and, and transformed that. Uh, uh, what's the character transformation for you kind of been like? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess this is a bit of a soul searching kind of thing, if you will. Um, I've kind of always been a space cadet as far as like in school, like I, I was totally into space. I was always, um, I was always into the, into, uh, like Mass Effect was my favorite video game, and and uh, like different movies. Like uh, I, w- I don't want to say Star Wars if not a big Star Wars fan because it kind of puts me to sleep. But not everybody has the same thing. But anyways, um, I started with the uh, too much metal thing just kind of as a it was easy. It was just super easy to do. Like why not? I was a metalhead. I used to be in a band i used to sing i used to do this i used to do that might as well come out and sing and dance and all that stuff and uh, when it came down to it like i think it was like 2012 i really wanted to change who i was and what i was doing and i had been the you know the, the good guy who came out singing and or and dancing and, and being high energy and for me that was that was fun but it wasn't like it didn't captivate me and i wanted to kind of um create something that was hard for me to to transition into kind of had to like get comfortable and when i came up with the unholy character it was more along the lines of um like this uh demon who doesn't believe in anything he's just like the only thing is that he believes in in himself and going forward and what he wants. And um, I took it on as um, I was taking on a group and my trainer, Karrion Arcane, he uh, he was retiring. He was the leader of the group. He was a big dark heel. And so I kind of did it as homage at first and then just fucking <laughs> – Sorry, I can't say that. <laughs> no, you know you're you're all good. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Um, I just kind of ran with it, and like I totally fell in love with it. And uh, I went from being this uh, demon to I'm still transitioning. I'm still trying to find exactly what it is that I'm harnessing and I'm creating. Uh, it seems that fans like it. I really enjoyed, you know, painting my face and. I, uh, I started doing that as a spire a lot, and um, when Ultimate Warrior died, who was really like my my favorite wrestler, he was the one who just like got my attention right away. Other than Jeff Jarrett and Shawn Michaels and and some others, uh, Bret Hart, but um, he was like 
as a kid, like hey, that's the colorful guy. Like obviously you're gonna look at him and, and just like wow, look at look at the ultimate warrior. So I started painting my face once he died as like my tribute to him. And uh it's become one of those things where I don't want to take it off. Like I hate that it's even smudged after a match because I just wanted to be perfect the whole time. <laughs> I, I love painting my face and all that stuff. Definitely. And then we kind of bring it up sometimes here on the Indie Mayhem show of sort of indie wrestlers kind of like like marketing themselves and making kind of like a brand. I feel like you do that very well, especially like like with the half face paint and with all the symbols and stuff like that. You you definitely are more than just like a, someone who goes in the ring and wrestles, it seems. Do you feel like that's a very important aspect when it comes to, you know, even for an independent wrestler? Absolutely. I think 100% you have to sell yourself. It's, I mean, that's the whole point of the job is to, is to sell who you are and who your opponent is. And the fact that you can be your opponent as much of a badass as he is like marketing it and selling and creating a character. Why would I just want to watch a guy just go in there and put on a pair of black tights and a pair of white boots and, and, and roll around. Like I could, I could watch any Joe Blow do that, but it's the characters. It's like the ultimate warrior. It's the undertaker. It's, it's the rock, you know, it's, it's larger than life. And I think that helps really invest the wrestling fan. Definitely. And, and it seems as though you, you've grown a bit of a following because of it also. And, and even extending to, I know you're now aligned with uh, Jason Silver and you form a bit of a tag team across Texas, uh, uh, sort of sharing that sort of same kind of moniker with the half pay spade and all that. Uh, do you feel like, you know, obviously it feels like opportunities have been growing for you. Do you feel, you know, that's sort of been the same way? Uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying tagging with Jason. Um, I've kind of known Jason ever since I broke in. I've been doing this uh, six and a half years now, and Jason's always been there. He was one of the first guys I really started wrestling with outside of Metroplex Wrestling, and uh, we've we've always remained friends over the years. Um, whether we were foes in the ring or tagged together or what have you, um, he's always kind of had my back and been with me through some really tough times on a personal note. Um, but... I'm really enjoying tagging with him, and I've never actually been a tag wrestler too much. I've always kind of been just like a singles wrestler, and I don't know um, how that came about, but that's just where I was focused on. And uh, I'm really starting to to enjoy the Unholy Complex and tagging in, in several promotions and, and bringing that to more, and hopefully uh, it becoming, you know, a... a a very profitable and, and a, tag, a very popular tag team that can flourish. Awesome. Uh, uh, speaking of sort of the more opportunities coming your way, I know you've uh, done a lot of work recently for uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling. Uh, uh, I know you've got to participate, participate in some of their tryout camps and also recently uh, uh, on some of their events. Uh, even uh, this past last weekend, you were on the uh, pre-show for the uh, All-Star Extravaganza. Um, what's it been like sort of uh, – you know, growing your connections with the Ring of Honor and 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 specifically those like training camps that you attended. Uh, uh, what's it been like, sort of getting in front of them more often? Uh, the first thing I ever did was the training camp, uh, which was a combo. It was Ring of Honor and it was um, uh, New Japan, and so I was super nervous. I was, I was, I beyond nervous. I was ready to puke. And uh, luckily, I had uh, friends there that I knew that I could work with in the ring. That if um, just if I was lucky enough, got paired with them, I could really shine and, and, and feel comfortable. But um, the, all nerves aside, I feel like uh, I, I showed them that I that I could, uh, you know, handle myself in a ring. Uh, they told me to uh, gain some weight and get some better gear and I did that and within a year I was uh doing the Oklahoma show back in um uh late May. I did that and uh that was me and Americos versus uh uh Keith Lee and Shane Taylor, the pretty boy killers and we got to dark uh dark match open the show for that. That was really fun. Um and then uh just kind of kept in touch with production people and, you know, different friends I've made. Uh, uh, Will Ferrara, he's pretty, he's a really good dude. Uh, Rhett Titus, I've, uh, I've hung out with him a little bit. Um, just 
made the connections and kept emailing them and staying on their tail. Like, hey, you guys are going to be here at this date. I just so happen to live in Texas. Uh, what do you say? You know, is it cool if I show up and help out? And, you know, maybe hopefully you guys can, you know, give me a shot in the ring. And, and you know, I scratch my back, you scratch yours. And uh, it worked out for me. It was very, I was very lucky. I'm very, uh, very grateful. And uh, this weekend was a very humbling experience. I uh, got to, like you said, Damon, I got to open the all-star extravaganza, which was uh, something I went down there with the, uh, I totally didn't expect it. I didn't expect it was be, it would be me on the first night to, to get a match because I was just standing there in the right spot at the right time. Um, and when Truth Martini was like, um, you come with me. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, uh, Hey guy, uh, let me see, let me see your body. Let me, let me, uh, let me see, let me see your looks. How you looking these days? You know, he's got that voice and he's always, uh, he's always Truth Martini. And so, and, uh, so, uh, he's like, let me see your, let me see your looks. And our, uh, he's like, all right, it's a tag match. You and Donovan Dijak. Go in there six minutes uh, afterwards. You know we'll uh, we'll we'll play around and see what happens. And uh, the crowd uh, was San Antonio, so I've worked out in San Antonio a few times and uh, got the crowd behind me just as I walked out. So that was really great to hear and have them behind me. And uh, I think it helped show uh, that you know I'm not just some person like you said i have a, a bit of a following and you know the people that love the the whole face paint stuff and the the, the hand low, uh, symbol and the pose and all that stuff and um then i got nothing but positive reviews the match went over very very well and i couldn't have asked for a, a better match honestly i got to work with watanabe who i worked with uh, at inspire for you and uh for all of them over there um that was uh a lot of fun i got to hang out with him and, and crack jokes and um <laughs> <laughs> and uh kind of uh make fun of some uh some wrestlers court stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's always good um yeah. uh so uh going into sort of like the future goals you have for wrestling would you say ring of honor is definitely a big one but but i mean are, are any sort of goals that you have in mind sort of going further in your career um i had i had some money saved up to go to uh japan by the end of this year if i was over i was hoping by this time this year i would be uh in japan uh but some personal stuff and you know that always comes up and finances get flushed down the drain and uh I did that Oklahoma and the Amarillo Ring of Honor show. And once I did it and I had a match, I was like, my five-year plan within the next five years is I have to be a Ring of Honor uh, mainstay. Like, that's no joke. That's where I want to be. And that's what I'm going to do, whatever it takes to get there, you know, you know, whatever ass I got to kiss, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. But I mean, it definitely seems like that's definitely headed towards your future, uh, uh, the way things have been going. Um, sort of going into some of the general questions that we ask uh, everyone here on the show. Um, uh, one of them is, uh, what are you watching currently when it comes to wrestling, uh, either for recreation or to study? Uh, is there anything that you kind of have your eye on currently? Uh, I've been uh, watching NXT as like a, a recreation. and I keep up with the pay-per-views. I don't, uh, I don't personally keep... Uh, Tell like a network television or whatever. I just have internet and you know Netflix and chill and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hulu and commitment and all that. But I've uh, uh, been watching a lot of uh, Bret Hart and uh, some Brian Pillman. Um, I'm a big fan of Brian and uh, been watching some Sabu lately. Um, then I've been watching. Uh, so I always keep up with PWG. Try to keep up with with what's modern and who's really really popular right now, and uh, <clears throat> and obviously the Ring of Honor product and uh, the Young Bucks. They're they're the fucking Young Bucks. They're amazing, right? Um, totally. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. I think it's, I've been kind of like study wise. I've been kind of wanting to go back to like um, watching the old like eighties wrestling. Like Mr. Perfect and, and, and Rick Rude and, and Sting and Flair and and 
watching those uh, steamboat and flare matches. Those were phenomenal. Totally. Definitely. Um, and I guess uh, the best way to kind of close this out is the question we uh, we ask everyone here on the show. And uh, people take it in many different sort of directions, so feel free. Uh, and uh, the question we have is, what is, in your opinion, the best thing and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Andy Dalton. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 nah, I just wanted to get a rise out of him. <laughs> uh He's probably asleep back there. Um, uh, no, I think um, the best thing right now, I want to say, is the. Uh, I feel like there's like a an uprise for like the independent feel. Like if you look at NXT, like it look, it looks like a, uh, like Inspire, like with a, like endless budget of production, you know. Like the the wrestling quality of the show has gotten a lot better as far as where you know a lot of fans would have considered it four or five years ago and i've I've kind of fallen back in love with it where i for a while I'd stopped watching it as well, even when i you know was wrestling, I was just you know watching my peers and not watching them in w w e um as far as like the worst thing in wrestling i don't know i there's a lot of things that a lot of people would say is just the worst thing in wrestling. And uh, I think it's the worst thing in wrestling is the backstabbing, like having a friend and you think they're, they got your back and they'll just, they'll slap you in the face or they'll, you know, steal, steal from you. They'll do, you know, whatever it, you know, whatever they feel uh, is morally right to them. But that, as far as like, from my personal experience, the the backstabbing and the and the lack of trust, and I live by the Stone Cold ways, and that's uh, DTA. Don't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to be, but but uh, definitely. Um, thank you very much, Greg, for uh, coming on and talking with us and and sharing a bit of your story. Um, if uh, anybody wants to check you out, uh, any upcoming events that you're going to be on, or if they want to follow you on a uh, social media uh feel free to uh plug away all right you can follow me on facebook at forward slash unholy gj uh twitter is gregster 777 even though i don't even know the password to it <laughs> so i need to fix that uh, <laughs> uh, uh my next couple shows uh october 3rd i'll be at uh, uh metroplex wrestling for battle lines let me look at my my phone i got the calendar here hang on sorry 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 uh, no, it's okay. 26th I'll be <laughs> 26 the 26th I'll be at Squared Circle Pro in uh, Lubbock, Texas. Um uh where else? Uh should be at Inspire hopefully. Uh what was the date again in I mean, you I know. Uh, November 1st is uh, the next event. I know you and uh, uh, Jason Silver making your presence known uh, uh, towards uh, Ricky Starks, the Inspire Pro Champion. So yes, definitely yes. have to see what comes of that. We coming for you, you know, uh, Booker T style. Uh, <laughs> November first at Inspire uh, Halloween night, I believe I'll be working uh, my roommate. Uh, so I'll be uh, taking out some uh, some punishment on him. Uh, at IHWE in, in Crowley, Texas. Um, and then another uh, October 24th, back at MPX. Uh, should be get my hands on Teddy Hart, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Uh, so definitely, uh, and if you're anywhere near Texas or anywhere Greg is wrestling, be sure to check him out because you will definitely uh, be entertained. Um, so like, again, like I said, thank you very much, Greg, for joining us uh, here on the Indie Mayhem Show. And uh, we're going to Take a quick look now at all the stuff that happened this past week in Sorgatron Media. I can have Stephen Merchant as Wheatley have a conversation with Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Yeah, with Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Scooby-Doo, Wheatley, and Doctor Who can sit down and have a cup of tea, ale, uh, Scooby snacks, or whatever oil, whatever Wheatley drinks. In the DeLorean. In the DeLorean <laughs> that could be parked outside of the TARDIS. 
and said, hey, you know, uh, CM Punk needs the shirt to wear on TV when he wore the I Broke Big Show's hand shirt. <laughs> so we printed that shirt and he wore it on TV. And that was kind of the beginning of the relationship. From that point uh, on, Colt was contacting my boss, you know, saying that he wanted to make some of his own shirts that he could go and sell at shows. And that kind of snowballed into what the business is now. In June of 2013, they officially launched Pro Wrestling Tees together. We've got an yep. HD camera, six axis gyro. So the drone, it can do flips and whatnot. The range is 300 feet, gets up to 45 miles an hour. You can download an app onto your phone so the camera can live stream. It also comes with a virtual reality headset. So say you're streaming on your phone, you just put your phone in a headset, then you can wear it. So while you're flying, you're seeing what the drone is seeing. What's great about it being modular is that um, every single part is gonna be online. You can swap parts in and out. And then as more accessories are available, you can always attach them onto the drone. Uh, right. So by the time we got to it, we were freaking hyped and we're like, oh my God, he did it. And then- Don't, don't, don't use that word. What? Hyped. <laughs> I'll Major use Raleigh it. Bust through that wall. <laughs> Kool Aid man, he's gonna Kool Aid right through this wall behind me and, and kill my dead owl. Uh, anyways, he's gonna three more times, he's gonna hold me behind you and kill my dead owl. <laughs> And we're back, and thank you so much. Uh, the great interview there with the unholy one. Uh, we should have introduced him that way. I can add some effects on that afterwards if you'd like. Unholy, definitely. We'll we'll, we'll make it very very dark and eerie. Uh, it is. Uh, it is for the interview. Yeah, it'll be nice. So from the unholy Texas to um, the backwoods here in uh, West Newton, PA, uh, RWA had their fall free for all this past weekend uh saturday night and as we uh, uh talked about last week we got a little rah-rah as uh, apparently they were going head-to-head -head five minutes down the road to uh with uh impact wrestling little show that's on yes. television uh and they had a house show their third house show of the year it's september guys what and if you may <laughs> recall i was making um uh claims uh, that uh maybe maybe rwa this this little this little rinky dink fed may uh uh outdraw impact pro wrestling with names like T with like like kurt angle on it and friend of the show zima ion and uh and tommy dreamer was on the show says, yeah i mean it was a pretty it was a pretty stacked card let's be honest right um if people halfway up this card were on some of the local shows, we'd expect a, a few more people to show up, right? But uh, the word is, of course, we talked to Eels a little bit about this on Wrestling Mayhem Show this 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 evening. You can check that out, Wrestling Mayhem Show 488. 488. And uh, the, the numbers uh, coming in about, I think he said like 210 or so, if, if I recall, something around there uh, for RWA. That's the one, that's the number we know. Now, if you go and read some of these things coming from Bob Ryder, who is the apparently the executive something or other for TNA Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, whatever the hell they're called these days, that's the problem, as we discussed on the other show. Supposedly, they had 750 people there in Ross River Ice Gardens. Now, that number is in question. One, if there are 750 there, <laughs> how many of them paid? And two, nothing looks like more than uh, maybe 200 people in pictures from the night. Any pictures that were around of the night. Uh, some, you know, some, of course, were very exclusively, oh, this is, you know, after the doors opened. Some were from 9 o'clock. I don't know if the timestamp can really be, um, um, you know, believed, I guess. Now, and even uh, Justin Labar today, friend of the show, Justin Labar, on Triv Live Radio, uh, was uh, talking about how there was a couple hundred people there. So, kind of going along with that idea of maybe there's about 200 people there. Uh, so, whatever that number is, we don't know. Nobody's releasing numbers. Nobody's saying anything otherwise. It's all purely speculation and will be. Uh, <laughs> the reports are they are not releasing official attendance figures. Also, uh, the show was papered, Eamon. Mm. As in, there's a flyer about, hey, Impact Wrestling's coming to town around California University, just down, eh, more than down the road there. It's where Wheels is. And uh, talking about, hey, pick up your free tickets uh, in the student center or something like that. So students got to be free at the local college. Uh, 
that's a yeah, that's the thing to also take into account, I guess. So, and beyond that, whether there were 750 people there, whether there are 200 people there, and how many of them paid is a question. But one thing is not in question that RWA did not dip in numbers. With their crew, we have some great people like uh, Jesse Bell Smothers, like uh, Jason Gorey, for instance. Um, and generally not uh, a lot of really big grudge matches, big pushed matches around that kind of stuff. Uh, the big match was Amazing Red against Sanjay Dutt returning. Sanjay Dutt out for a couple months. Amazing Red debuting for the held up Cruiserweight Championship since Sanjay was out for a few months. They just held it up for, for those few months and he had to fight for it again. Um, I think... Regardless of what that speculative number is with TNA, seeing that they did not make a significant dent in RWA is a success of the local guys and their strong fan base. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it comes down to, I mean, obviously TNA, you know, they don't have the, te the national television deal they used to have, but, you know. Amen, amen. I would like to contest that RWA is on the internet, which makes them worldwide. <laughs> That's, that's a very good point. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, yeah, I mean, television in a sense, uh, even, you know, in the case of like Destination America is still television, you know, doesn't always mean that it, it's going to create a result in, in, in that aspect. You know what I mean? It, it's, you know, it's who promotes the better show. Right. And who, or not even the better show, but who promotes the show better, you know? Right. Um, I, I think that, you know, an indie promotion, if done correctly, if if promoted correctly, if if you know um, uh, interest is drawn uh, uh, toward by a certain audience, then then you know anything can happen. Uh, you know, a company that's been around for ten years or, or not even ten years, probably like thirteen, fourteen years now, has TNA been going and and you know all the star power that they have and 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 as many people who know what TNA is, uh, you know, for them to, you know, allegedly or whatever, draw about a couple hundred uh, and RWA to hold strong with the, the amount of audience they've normally been getting. I mean, that says a lot. Right, right. And again, a raucous crowd, as it always is. Uh, and, and a really good, a really good time. Um, and I think it was a good show. Uh, there was a lot of, the card is weird. Can I say that? <laughs> it is a weirdly booked show. I'm not going to oh, get yeah. into it, but I have my thoughts. But genuinely, the show was very entertaining and the show was good. Um, maybe not good in the way of uh, generally as a whole show, you know, you're going to enjoy it in the same vein of an Inspire Pro. But I mean, they're very, I've always said this, they're, they're booking for that crowd that's sitting in the seats, right? They're not booking for DVD. And right. that's what you gotta do. I mean, like, yeah. you know, you yeah. can't. I wouldn't put it in, you know, for at least from what I heard, I've never been to an RWA show, but I wouldn't put it in Inspire Pro show in front of an RWA audience. No, absolutely you know not. What I mean, I mean, I mean it, it, your 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 shows are geared towards. Can I say a similar audience to maybe PWG? Yeah, I mean, I think comparing Austin, Texas to like California, PA is just kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> not, not no knock on California, PA. That's true. I love, I love everyone at RWA. Uh, uh, <laughs> they, they, I've heard nothing but well, all these yahoos but, over here. Yes. Yeah, so those, those yahoos. There you go. Um, but no, I, they're different audiences and a true great promoter can understand what their audience is and, and learn how to appeal to that. We, you know, we run uh, Inspire Pro runs basically downtown Austin, so mm -hmm. you know it's that kind of audience that we're attracting. You know, people that are a bit more, you know, not to say RWA isn't, I don't know, but like, you know, people that are a bit more progressive and and you know, people who are more of the I people say hipster or whatever kind of kind of audience. Right. You know, it's it's that's Austin. You know, and and yeah, it's knowing your audience is so extremely important. You know, I. I I don't know what TNA knows of their audience, but, you know. 
Uh, obviously, they didn't find it here uh, south of Pittsburgh or around California, PA, or anything like that. Um, I, I don't know. It, it's it's weird. And, and it's just a, um, when, when you and RWA and IWC are having record houses this year, and yet we get pathetic showings for a house show in Console Energy Center, we get pathetic showings. There's no doubt about it. We get there pathetic showings for uh, GFW TNA with names. They're names mm-hmm. of, of some value, regardless. Even if it's not, you, you don't find value in the guys that are TNA originals, um, the names they bring in. A Kurt Angle in his hometown can't can't draw? Yeah. Like, is also, that says a lot. <laughs> that says something is wrong here. And I don't think that, I don't think Kurt Angle is the problem. If, if you will. Um, and I think it's promotion. And I think uh, we, we, I've seen other indies promote and not do well. And then other indies that I didn't think were going to do well in promotion do very well. And other indies that, that have television draw very little. But then have DVDs that are doing very, very well now. Um, right. I, I mean, it's it's weird. You know, it, you get, um, you know, it, it's 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 a, it's a mix. And you, now you got me thinking because I've you know, I've been a big proponent for a while of I want professional wrestling in downtown Pittsburgh, not downtown necessarily, but in Pittsburgh, in city limits of Pittsburgh. Right. And. Now, you, you talk about being downtown and you're uh, attracting a certain thing. If you talk about Austin, Texas being a very um, event oriented town, I believe, in the past, which makes me wonder, would I don't think RWA is going to fly downtown. I, I'm very, very honestly, I think that works for the area it's in. Um, I'm not I'm really kind of considering would IWC work downtown for that crowd? And also, I, I, do we really have to get down to what neighborhood they're in, do you think? I, I think so. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't know a, a great deal of, of the, you know, the Pittsburgh area. I've been no, up a no, no, no. But I mean, just but... just an assessment of like, would inspire wrestling, uh, would inspire wrestling work in San Antonio, you know, or would would inspire wrestling work if they were in the suburbs of Insp- of, of, of of Austin, Texas? Um, I uh, suburbs of Austin maybe still because I think it's I think Austin in general is very much like a, it, it's a linear kind of mindset. Uh, but like, if I don't th- like, I don't think we can do a show in San Antonio and it be like the same kind of show, you know. Right. Uh, there's a different audience. The the companies that run in San Antonio run a very different way than uh, uh, we run, you know, and, and put out a much different product than we do, and that's the way it should be, mm-hmm. you know. Um, the, I think the more south you go in Texas, the the more traditional you sort of get, the more reliance there is on like name value and, 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 you know, people that you've seen on TV and stuff like that, not to knock it, but that's kind of where, what you see. Um, uh, Austin, people in Austin and, and the more North you get like a Dallas or something like that. Um, they know more of like the top independent names and they follow independent wrestling a bit more. So they want to see that kind of style. Um, but yeah, it, it Knowing your area is so immensely important. Uh, you can put book in your mind what the best thing you feel is, but if it's not in front of an audience that will accept it in the same way, then it's you know it's pointless. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting things to consider. Mm, well, definitely. Um, either way, and, and we we uh, I know you and I. If you guys don't know, we've been on basic sorgonomics usually after this I record, and, and I've been dragging Eamon along with me, kicking and sc- screaming <laughs> the last couple of weeks about some of the things going on with Inspire Wrestling, what they're doing with social media. Uh, one thing we did do we do we say this for basic sorgonomics? I'm not sure. It's more of a social media. You know what? Where I am, I, I am going to pull about uh, pull this over. It's going to be part of this series. I don't know if Eamon's going to want to join me and kind of analyze what happened here. Uh, but no, no that's it. but I think uh. Well, well, we, we did a hashtag RWA fall free for all for the show. I just kind of grabbed the announcer and said, hey, um, let's do this. Uh, let's just remind people throughout the night. And uh, there's a lot of them that are like us with Sorgatron Media Mayhem Show, uh, the, the promoter and, uh, and, and, and the promotion itself. Uh, and a lot of people working on the show. But there's still a lot of media in there. And it's really cool to go in and see, hey, look, here's the show together. We're not as cool yeah. as Inspire Pro Wrestling just yet, but uh, but it's but a, it's a start. It's a start. You know, and, and you we you know we 
didn't see immediate results social media wise, you know, the first time we started doing things like Mm -hmm. uh, it it is a process. But if you can, in, in the case of social media, if you can engage an audience and if you can encourage them and, and to, to sort of, you know, you know, speak their mind and kind of, you know, hype a show for you. That's a, that's, you know, amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the things for us that we've, we've tried to do is when we promote a hashtag or we promote people to tweet about the show, I think the one thing we always try to mention is that do for them to do it so that we can see it and we can see what they're talking about and we can see their opinions. So it makes them feel that, Oh, I'm being heard in a sense. Right. right. You know, I think that's valued a lot wrestling nowadays. Right. Is at least, at least amongst wrestling fans, like people want to be heard, especially like with like what people think, you know, WWE feels about like, yeah, internet and especially, especially like, since they don't feel like they are on the mass scale, like WWE. Yeah, I think I think people want to be heard, and people, you know, the, that's a good way of doing it is to, you know, mm-hmm. you know, promote that uh, aspect. Perfect. But I'm, I'm glad that's happening with you know uh, RWA. You know, I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, the more effort that people put in, the better. There's, you know, I, there's some really great groups up here in Texas that I feel like if they just promoted themselves a bit more on social media and and did more, like like I feel like they would, you know, get be even more successful than they already are. Mm-hmm. It lays the groundwork for something interesting like what went viral last month with uh, uh, Jock Sampson, friend of the show, landing in the crowd at IWC's Cage Fury or or something like mm-hmm. you guys with the table spot with Delilah Doom and, and uh, Angela Slane. And Angela Slane. Yeah. You got it right. That's right. Um, I don't know why that one <laughs> slips. I, she was awesome when she was on the show and I love her Instagram. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, but, but it lays the groundwork for when something like that happens, you have a chance to capitalize on it and for people to be included and have 10 angles. And we also very specifically uh, changed the announcement to say, eh, well, I don't want to get too far into this out, but to say, encourage the social media. Uh, please no, I think, I, I forget how we were. Pretty much we said no long form recording, but please tweet and Instagram mm-hmm. and Vine and do all that kind of stuff. We just said, please do it. Just just do it, please. You know, uh, completely do your video and, 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 and that's fine. You know, uh, and I think yeah. you, you do a line there. But again, let's talk about that on basis. I want to talk about the rest of the indies. Our friend Matt Carlin has been doing a great blog over on indie wrestling us. Please go check it out and talk about, of course, all American wrestling. How this defining moment event in uh, Illinois on Friday? Johnny Gargano uh, took on Chris Hero. Ethan Page. Remember that guy? He took uh, he defended his uh, heavyweight title against Matt Cross. Uh, other awesome guys, and of course, Son of Havoc and Lucha Underground, Trevor Lee uh, against Christian Faith, uh, the Hooligans against uh, the uh, the uh, Ohio's for Killers, who are who are amazing, and the former yeah. Irish Airborne, of course. And I'm hearing great things about them. Um, oh, who was it? Somebody was just telling me about how uh, somebody was digging them up in that promotion, and they might be getting a little more work in Ohio. I think Darren De Niro. Uh, might be getting some work up there. So it's good to see guys like that getting around. Uh, a side note, I'm hearing good things about uh, other uh, other female competitors that are coming around uh, with IWC as well, getting some really cool gigs. So um, so look for them. Keep an ear out. You may hear a familiar name or two um, around the indies, around some other media, hopefully, uh, in the long run. So And we hope to report that as, as that starts popping up here. Um, so not AAW again, uh, what's that Illinois? So that's, uh, a, a, about a state away from me. Uh, but uh, definitely one that pops up a bit. I think a friends of ours, like, like Fasad and Gory have also worked for this promotion. Maryland championship wrestling mm. now has my attention as they did autumn Ar- Armageddon tour, uh, with a Saturday in Hollywood, Maryland in the main event, MCW heavyweight champion, the bruiser G fed Jake, the snake Roberts defeated Jake, the snake Roberts defeated. He wrestled two people. No, 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 wait, wait, I'm reading this wrong. No, three on two, three, no, three on three. I, I don't know how to read it. It's late. It's late. Uh, but more Number important, three. because there's pictures, um, Mickey James defended a women's title against Kimberly. Oh, Mickey James. That's my girl right there. Uh, promoting or, or wrestling not too far away in Maryland. I don't know what part of Maryland. It's probably over by Baltimore. It's actually probably like four hours away. I could do it. I could make it. Uh, anyways, hey, so uh, there was a Jersey Jersey Championship Wrestling. Always, I thought was funny because they were JCW, and of course, I know JCW is Juggalo Championship Wrestling. Apparently, they gave up the ghost and they changed their name right. to uh, Game Changer Wrestling. 
Uh, there's a, a, a series of, 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 okay, they did, they did an event at the uh, Food Truck and Rock Carnival in Clark, New Jersey. You had hey, me there at, we go. You had me at Food Truck. It doesn't get much uh, carny hipster <laughs> than that. Uh, but uh, there's, there's an entire match uh, online on YouTube that they shared, and I unfortunately can't pull this um, full screen. I don't know. Did you look at this thing? They break out. So there was like a, an extreme bike stunt track out by out, outside the tent where they were wrestling, and they started getting involved and in, and in, in wrestling out by the carnival. If you look, if it's the, it's a right wow. angle. Let me let me pull this back a little bit. If you're watching on the video, there's actually a laser loop in the background, uh, and there's a bunch of porta potties. Thankfully, the porta potties were not involved in this match that I saw uh, from the best. There's a laser loop right there. There you go. Or whatever the heck they call that thing. <laughs> and not only that, uh, the next day, uh, Pinky Sanchez was going for the extreme title uh, with Gulak. And uh, and there was the use of a, a one of the bicycles from the extreme biking. Uh, they were really big on using nice. this thing. Um, there's, so there's a couple of them, some ginger taps. There's a periscope. I think there was both a periscope and a vine of this. So we're taking all of our social medias uh, to heart on this one. Uh, so, and aside from that, uh, you know, mentions for Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment, uh, Sugar Dunkington, Sugar D was a, a part of that, a friend of the show there, and uh, Upstate 8 tournament from Upstate Pro Wrestling in Rochester, New York happened. Uh, in a final four-way match, a bunch of names, including A.R. Fox, uh, Matic, are you familiar with Matic? He has a lot of T's in his name. Amen. Mm. Oh, did I lose Eamon? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and of course he mentions. Oh, it's And of, <laughs> of course he mentions RWA, and of course Amazing Red winning the Cruiserweight title over there, and Pro Wrestling Magic. That's a promotion. It held its Ascendio <laughs> event it? in Bogota, New Jersey, including uh, Robbie E defeating Club Coleman, Billy Hayes defeating Dasher Halffield, who we just had on a couple of weeks ago. Um, so really fun stuff. Uh, so a, other than just reading his blog here, but I love that he has videos and everything. Go check it out, indiewrestling.us uh, slash blog, and uh, check that out. Thank you, Matt Collins, for that. So anything else? Any indie wrestling fit to ramble about? Uh, the only thing, I, and I, I never know if we qualify this as indie wrestling or not, but uh, uh, I did go to the, uh, the Ring of Honor show. Okay. Uh, uh, the the pay-per-view. Uh, uh, this past weekend, uh, I'll, I mean, I think it was kind of covered a bit. Mike covered it a bit on the Wrestling Mayhem show, but a uh, uh, fun time is always. Live wrestling is always fun. Uh, uh, I think Ring of Honor is doing some good stuff lately. I think it's something to keep your eye on. Uh, you know, I, I would consider them maybe the number two now that TNA is kind of you know fell by the wayside. Um, they definitely tore yeah, a little bit yeah. and draw a little better than TNA does. I would say. Um, but yeah, the fun time is always. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can say. I mean, if you're, you know, want to check them out, the pay- obviously the pay per view I think is on demand, uh, so you can go check that out. And yeah, it was a fun time. Awesome. Yeah, always good things I'm hearing from there. And um, I, I've been watching some uh, Ring of Honor leading into the paper pay per view, and I was liking some of the build, some of the fun stuff they were doing. And Dalton Castle killing it as always. So always, always. All right, sir, I think that's it for today. Thank you for bringing our guest, Gregory James, the Unholy One. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm mixing up his name a little bit, I know. Uh, no, but that's fair. Him joining <laughs> us. Yeah. Look for him on Holy GJ. I think I got that right on the Facebooks. Uh, he's got some sweet photos up there. It looks unholy as shit, dude. Um, and, of <laughs> course, uh, check out uh, IndiaWrestling.us, the new titles, including RWA. Um, somebody already bought the, the women's match while I was sitting here. That was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, nice. there's a lot of fun stuff going on there. And, uh, of course, uh, check out Inspire Pro Wrestling. Eamon, you hear his voice over there, of course. Yes, you do. We've also talked, uh, and maybe we'll bring it up on Basic Store Economics, uh, uh, we, we talked about capitalizing on, on social media. Uh, I feel like we are going to be doing that because uh, the Battle Wars 2 DVD should be coming out very soon. I know it is, nice. from what I've heard, pretty much complete. Uh, uh, so we're going to get that out as soon as possible and sort of hopefully capitalize on that. Uh, so you can check out the full Angelus Lane, Delilah Doom Street fight, uh, all the Chikara guys that came down. You can see it all. Uh, so yeah. Awesome. Completely awesome. Uh, and yeah, so check out basic Sorgonomics, Sorgatron.com. Uh, look for the ones about Instagram mostly. 
and uh, and 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 such. And we'll uh, for the last few weeks uh, with this guy on it as well. Just look for his name, Amy Payton, on there at Amy Two. Please, I'm Matt Sorgatron. Please check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com and this and other shows. Subscribe to us, uh, comment, um, share with us. Oh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. 412-206-WMS0. Big thanks to BasicSickness.com, SliceOnBroadway.com, and ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS to support the show or support the main show or support this at uh, Patreon.com slash Show. Thank you for those that do donate to the show and find value and want to try to keep this show alive. From viewers like me. Uh, from, <laughs> from Sorg and Eamon, until next time. Support you. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com.